Well, today on Nation, a window cleaners podcast, we're talking all about the lessons I've learned over like 18 years of window cleaning. So if you are a window cleaner or you just somehow want to listen to podcasts about window cleaning, either way, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? If it's your first time here, have a look around. Hopefully you enjoy it. Uh, hopefully it's halfway decent. Uh, podcast is anywhere podcast you found, of course. Um, most people listen. But if you also want to just play it on YouTube, it's also found on the YouTubes. So go and binge. There's like almost seven years of content. A ton. A ton of content. So go back, watch that. And uh, speaking of all of that content, that's what we're talking about today. I just kind of want to go over some lessons that I learned over all of these years that I still am shocked that they're truth. Now, I'll start by saying I'm just a dummy who sits in front of a camera. I don't know anything more than anybody. I don't know anything more than you. I'm just telling you my thoughts on what I thought was one way in the beginning. And I know a lot of you do. Um, and um, over the years, I've learned the actual truth. It's kind of a lesson. Some hard lessons, some easy lessons, but I figured I would go over it with you. And uh, if you're on YouTube or anywhere else, comment and tell me what your lessons are. If you agree, disagree, start a conversation. I really would uh, appreciate that. But I'm going to jump right in and tell you kind of one of my favorite ones because um, this, you see more people who are new in window cleaning seeing this. There's a lot of people just in general that have this weird idea, but it's cleaning the windows doesn't matter. Like the window cleaning does not matter in your business. That's not the point of your business. That's not the 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 need of your business that's not the main part of your business There's so many people who will jump on and they'll be like we'll just do good work and you'll get people to call you and i'm telling you yes you got to do good work you can't do crap if you do crap work then no one's going to want you to do like that's obvious but every time i say this people go well you're telling people to do bad work i'm not because if it's bad they're going to know People are going to know. And no one's going to want to pay for crap work. What I'm saying is too many people focus on that being the main thing. Well, my when I clean a window, it is way cleaner than the other guy. Like that, that doesn't, if they have to pull out a microscope, that doesn't matter. If somebody does bad work, that matters. Don't do bad work. But Understand that 90% is 100%. There's too many people who focus on that. Like, well, I got to get my thing better. I got to do better. And then they're taking four hours on a house that should take an hour. They're spending so much more time. And they go, well, this guy's really going to appreciate it. And they're not. You look at windows. We all look at windows, but a customer looks through window. If they're looking through a window, they have to just make sure that it's clean. If it's microscopically clean and you somehow, you know, took the window apart to clean in between, like that wasn't part of whatever, understand it's not about the clean window. It's about the experience. The luxury people have about having their windows cleaned. No one has to do it. They can have dirty windows. If the house doesn't catch on fire. It's a luxury. So what really matters in your business is the service. It's the people. It's the service. It's the feeling. It's the experience. I know I say that all the time and people are always like, well, for you maybe, but in my area, <laughs> I have to... You don't. And I'm telling you, when you see guys that have the real change in their like minds and their hearts and their business, it's because they changed that mindset and they've created an entire experience that they just happen to clean windows. Again, I always, like if you watch the show, 
at all or listen to it. You've heard me say the whole Apple reference, and I love this one because when you buy an Apple thing, you buy an iPhone that is pretty much exactly the same as your iPhone you just got, but this is the newest one. And they're like, you know, this iPhone is is faster than the old one, and you could not tell it's faster, but if you use a micrometer with the, you know, software it'll show you that it's 0.0003 like it's not different but yet people love it they love to buy new things not everybody they love to buy it you get a box it's got plastic you gotta like open everything up everything fits perfectly no seams on the boxes boxes are thick satin feeling an iphone or any apple product has a feel that Feel is why people buy Apple. That's why people line up to buy the newest, greatest phone that nothing's changed. It's the experience. Now, if you say, well, yeah, but I don't buy a new phone every year, so that doesn't pertain to me, it does. When you open something and there's lots of packaging, or really crisp packaging, or packaging that's been engineered for that product, it feels like more of a quality product. It takes that experience of getting something new, which is some of the most popular YouTube channels, is just watching somebody open new things. And it takes that and extends it. And it takes you now longer to open a package. There's people who don't even throw the boxes away. So understand it's not about the windows, it's about the experience. Right? Somebody calls you because their windows are dirty? Yes. But why they tell their friends about it or hire you or get happy or excited? It's the experience. How did I make me feel? It's not about the windows. Stop focusing on that. It's also not about the price. This is another really hard lesson that I learn and it is probably one of the toughest lessons for any window cleaner to learn because we don't do, we're not our target market, right? I, if I wasn't a window cleaner, probably wouldn't hire somebody to clean my windows. I would do it myself. It's just what I am. But you're not your target market. And it is not about the price of the windows. Now, if you have XYZ for a price and the other company has XYZ for the price and you have no discerning difference between them and you then they're going to go for the cheapest one. Why not? If I get the exact same thing, then why not? This is like why the Walmarts exist. Like if you could bear dealing with, you know, gum stepped out on the floor and items off the shelf and everything, you go go to Walmart because you can buy the thing for less than you can somewhere else. That's why Walmart's so big. People go, yeah, because people buy because it's cheaper. It's the exact same thing. If you get the exact same thing and the exact same thing and one is cheaper, you'll go that way because it's the exact same thing. But you are not the exact same as your competition. It's not about cleaning the window. You all do that part. That's the exact same. But that's not what you're selling. You're selling the experience. You're selling you. Why you? Here's a hard truth for you, by the way. Think about this. You know that other guy that's in your area? You know you know him. Yeah, that's him. Take him and take you, put it side by side, and you know he's cheaper than you, right? Why would anybody hire you? That is your USP. That is ridiculously important for what you do. But in the same side is why somebody hires you is not because of price. If it is, and that's all you have to offer is price, be the cheapest. Race to the bottom, lose, don't have money for marketing, and then tell the world and the Facebook groups about how hard it is where you are. It's because you have nothing else to offer. You've seen those posts from people like, well, in my area, I need to charge 50 cents a window. That's all we can know. You have nothing else to offer. 
as you, you're a bad salesman. You did not talk to them about the reasons why they need to buy your service or why they need to hire you. All you focused on is price. But when you get into it, people go, well, what if I did, you know, it's January here in Wisconsin. What if I could, you know, take $50 off? That's what I'll do. Nobody cares. It's not the idea. They're not, it's not a price thing. At that time, it's the middle of winter. They're not hiring you. When it is busy, it's still not a price thing. If it is, and you think you lost a customer only because of price, you didn't tell somebody what you're worth. You didn't tell somebody your value. And yes, you cannot sell window cleaning for $3 million. Well, I'll clean your windows, it'll be $43,000. Well, the last guy charged me $199. You can't be that off. Because the amount of value you'd have to add to that to make that worth it is a lot. And there's a lot of value in a Lamborghini, but not everybody wants a Lamborghini. I mean, everybody may want one, but not everybody's buying one. So you have to be there, but not focused on the price. If you're higher, not obnoxious, but higher, why? Well, I need to pay for my advertising. Okay, but they don't care about that. Tell them why they would be paying for you, what they get by paying for you. That is the value. That's what you're adding that is not just price. And if you're stuck on price, the hard part is to get off that because you're going, well, it's got to be because of my price. I lost it because the other guy was cheap. Or, oh, there's so many guys in my area and uh, I, can't, I can't compete because they're, no, they're selling it better than you. They're telling people why. They're convincing people. They've made the process simple. They've done all that. It's not because they're cheaper. Because not always is cheaper better, right? If I say, hey, for you know a thousand dollars, I could sell you this horse, and for you know eleven hundred dollars, I could sell you this, you know, brand new car. Right in your head, a horse might be cool, but there's so much more work. It's so much whatever. It's oh uh, man, that eleven hundred dollars, extra hundred bucks to have a car where I don't have to feed the thing and pick up its poop. That's what matters. It's the difference between your two that is not price. Because again, price doesn't matter unless it's the only thing that is there. If it's the only thing they can compare, it's the only thing that does matter, right? So don't focus on price like that. And another one is imitation. When you go through and do all of that stuff, right? You create a company, you do all of those pieces there are still people who just want to imitate you. People will steal your logo, your colors, your blah, blah, blah. Let them. Do what they want to do. Want to be upset because you built the thing? Sure. But you keep doing you. They still can't be you. They still can't create the experience that you do. Even if they try to copy you, then you are still always innovating. You're the reason to thought it in the first place. Keep going on it. Don't worry about the others. I'll tell you a quick story. Uh, story time, buckle up. Uh, I was in New Orleans uh, for an event years and years ago. And uh, there was this young guy, and he was like, hey, I'm like new in the window cleaning, you know, and man, I'm just trying to come here and learn some things. I'm like, oh, cool. And he starts asking me questions. We're just sitting out on a balcony, a bunch of people. It's all kind of like, you know, after the event thing. And we're sitting there, and every day, this guy would come talk to me. He would talk my ear off and ask me all these questions, really specific questions. Like, hey, what are you charging for this? What about this style window? Do you have these? And everything was just spot on. I was in New Orleans. I didn't live in New Orleans. It was just an event. I'm talking, this guy's great. All of a sudden, three weeks after I get back, uh, somebody else has sends me a screenshot and goes, hey, wasn't this the dude you were talking to? Like the whole week? I was like, oh, yeah. He literally opened a business in my city, like little city, right up the street. And he knew that. He knew that I was in that area, and he pretended to not be. He told me he lived in where his parents were in another state, but that was a lie, and just learned every piece of my company, every piece, every bit, every section, every little thing that I did and I was super deceived I was like man this really sucks 
It sucks. Through the whole thing, I told him every ounce of my company, how I operate. He knew everything and completely did that all on purpose. He knew where I was. He knew all of that. That's why he asked such specific questions. I confronted him later and he's, you know, whatever, piece of garbage. But with that whole thing came out is that I realized that even if somebody knows your secret sauce, even if somebody has your grandma's recipe, they will not make that dish just like grandma made it. They won't. Because there's something to the innovator, the person who does it, that adds to it. I could tell you every piece of the puzzle, but it's your company and you're going to do things the way you're doing them. The next guy won't do it just like you do. So let the imitation happen because they're not clever enough to think, think of it on their own. Great. It's not your job to plan that for them. It doesn't water down you if you're still innovating, if you're still doing it, if you're still making that experience yours. It's a very interesting concept. Imitation's hard. That one's that one hurts. You know when you see a lot of people out there. Uh, and then not now. Obviously, I got that brain wrapped around. Anybody can ask me any question at any time, and I pretty much answer. I even do uh, personal coaching, like private one-on-one stuff. And what's crazy about that is that's like open book work on their business and know everything about every piece to everybody's business that I work on. I mean that's why private coaching, you know. Is so freaking amazing. But you have to dive in. You have to see all of that. You know every piece of it. Once you're an open book, it's like you still are doing it this way. The next guy isn't. The, the next guy is not able to do exactly what you do because their situation is not the exact same. I deal with a lot of companies on a one-on-one -on -one basis and not one of them is the exact same. Because they're not at all in the exact same spot. They're not in the exact same area. There's companies that are doing $100,000 a year and companies doing over a million dollars a year. There's a whole gambit. Don't worry about people copying you because when it all comes down to that basic, basic thing of the company, it's all the same anyway. It's you that creates the difference. Anyway, speaking of difference, if you want me to make a difference in your supply ordering world that's a terrible segue i'm a sales rep for windowclear.com it's what i do it's how i make my money by putting in uh orders for you guys and gals uh i get credit for it and uh, i get to you know live so that's really quite important to me to live and as everybody always says buy new hair gel apparently it's very Anytime I put an order and they say I could buy whatever name brand item, name brand band-aids, name brand hair gel, name brand gum, non-free shirts, I don't know. Whatever you want to do, I would love to be your rep. A shameless plug, which they work, is my number is 862-312-2026. Yes, my cell phone. Text me. Be like, yo, Jersey, I got an order. Just click save this cart and check out and text me. Be like, yo, I want you to put it in. It's the awesomest high five that you could possibly do i make a couple bucks and it doesn't cost you anything extra plus then you got a guy and it's like the ultimate thank you and you become a cool kid and i know you want to be a cool kid all the cool kids are doing it also get a subscription to awc magazine it's the american window cleaner magazine awcmag.com get a subscription go there subscribe it's like 69 dollars for the year Get a subscription. It's amazing. It will blow you away. And you get to be a window cleaning nerd like me and like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of other window cleaners who have the magazine. Be better than the competition. Just get it. It's just another piece to the puzzle of awesomeness. Uh, AWCMAG.com. And you get the subscription to your door, paper magazine, reel, and stickers. So, yeah, you should do it because you're awesome. There you go. Anyway, okay, back at it. So I'll tell you one of the biggest things that still on a mass, more window cleaners screw this part up than anything, in my opinion. And it's that simple cells. 
understand the concept and the reasoning and the trigger, all the pieces to simple. One of the big things that people do when it comes to selling, now I'm talking websites, I'm talking flyers, postcards, Facebook ads, EDD, all of that. People put everything. Well, we do window cleaning, gutter cleaning. No one, not ever, has read all that. We talk about home shows this time of year. Home shows are amazing. The best thing you could possibly do is have a booth and all it says is window cleaning on the back. And have a picture of a guy cleaning a window. And then in your booth, you are cleaning a window. Well... Yeah, it's great, but I also do pressure washing and gutter cleaning, roof cleaning. Yes, I know you do. But if you have a sign that says window cleaning, if I glance over, my brain will read that in the one second it takes me to glance over and look over. My brain can register that incredibly easy. Incredibly easy. If you put, instead of window cleaning, you put, you know... um, observable debris maintenance facilitator for glass, which I know you're laughing at the idea of something like that, but let's go absurd. If you did that, no one would catch on. And everybody would be like, they'd have to try to read it. Their brain wouldn't catch it. They wouldn't be able to skim it and they'd walk on to the next one. It's fair, right? Well, that's the concept in an exaggerated form. Be simple. If you're doing a flyer, a door hanger, hey, pardon the glare, we just cleaned your neighbor's windows. If you need your windows clean, we'd love to do it. Keep up with the Joneses, here's my number. Simple. More people will look at something when it's simple. More people will understand it when it's simple. More people will get it instantly. That's where skimming is. If you've ever seen buying triggers or look at marketing in general one of the things is that the larger the size of the text the first priority your brain has there's a lot of things and you can find them if you um, are on google or text me i'll shoot you a link uh, or a picture at least but if you just go and google um you know which part of an ad do i read first or something like that you'll find a bunch of stuff and it's just this is you read this first you read this second you will read this third And this is last. Like you'll read it that way and it's telling you exactly how you're reading it, right? So it knows your brain's looking at this thing. If you take away all the other stuff, the last thing people don't read. No one is reading your wrap of 30 items on the side of your car. No one is reading three pages of your pamphlet. They're glancing at pictures. They're looking for bullet points. Simple sells. Simple gets people interested. Now you can sell. Something else. Yeah, I say you guys did window cleaning. We absolutely do. Here's your price, blah, blah, blah. Oh, and just so you know, we also do uh, roof cleaning, gutter cleaning. We do hardscapes, patio. Do you have any other issues? Any type of dirty concrete? Anything you'd like us to brighten up? Any algae on your... I'm putting simple things out there. Simple terms, simple everything. Now I can upsell. But I got them in. People go, well, I want to advertise for pressure washing. Why would I... You didn't do it, but don't advertise window cleaning also, like in the same ad. Do one ad for just window cleaning, one ad for just pressure washing. People go, well, why don't I put everything together and then I can get it all and do one ad? No, you can't. You'll get less people with an ad that's that confusing. No one reads. If you've got a list of 10 items that you do, things, no one's read the number 10, 9, 8, or 7. They've read like the first one, tried to glance the second one, they're on to the next thing. Understand is not that people aren't paying attention or focusing. All it means is that when they look at something, it has to register in their brain. And the same reason when you look at a big, you know, poster of a bunch of words, it's just all written out there. It takes time for somebody to actually go through and read things. They do that because they have to, not because it's a created intrigue. If I create intrigue, oh, window washing. Yeah, I know. I, I know somebody's all oh, awesome. Yeah, and we also do this. And that. Now you have their attention. Now feed them more. You can't put 20 logs on a fire 
throw a match in it and have it just burst into flames. But what you can do is start some kindling, then add some grass, then add some sticks, twigs. Kindling itself, then add some bigger logs, right? As you grow, a little fire starts, you feed it, gets bigger, feed it, gets bigger. That's sales in your business. Simple sales. Look at your stuff. Have other people look at it. Do not tell me everything you do. I am not, nor has anybody found something or read through all of that. It is so absolutely rare that somebody read all 10 items. It's so rare. So don't tell everybody. Don't lose somebody. Don't be a jack of all trades, a master of none. Tell them one thing, your bread and butter. Advertise that, upsell the rest. It will change your life. And the last thing is the hard truth. But before I get into the hard truth, by the way, I didn't mention it, but I also think that the biggest growth thing you could possibly do for your business is focus on the existing customer as much or not, if not more than your new customers. You know, I've done a bunch of stuff on that, so I won't get into dentist clothes, but that is the number one thing you can do in your business to change how much money you make, by the way. But the hard truth and the and the one that the one that especially when you're on the groups, people don't say because it can hurt. And uh, this is this is that. It is your fault. Now, you instantly went to bad, I know. But this is good. It is your fault if your business is doing really well or really poorly. Or if you're into a time where your business is doing less than you think, less than you should be, less than you want to do. All of those things. It's your fault. And the reason is, is that when you look at the world and you look at a lot of stuff that's out there, people are so much more concerned with giving you a reason of why a thing happened than taking ownership. And where this becomes a problem is that I know guys that have had companies for 20 or whatever years. And if you're watching, it's not you. But there are other people who are like, well, it's because of people like you who are teaching these new guys how to do stuff and it's messing my business up. How, how did the new guy take your business? <laughs> I mean, you know, he, he's coming in here, you know, he, he's coming in here and, and, and you know, he's, he's just taking scoop and how though? Is it, did he, did he, is he cheaper than you? Yeah, well, you've been in business for 20 years, so no. You probably have not been raising your prices like you're supposed to, so that's not it. And if it is it, we've already talked about that, what value do you add? If he is cheaper, you guys are providing the exact same thing, of course. Of course somebody's going to go with the cheaper one because there's no reason to go with the more expensive one. Well, yeah, but <laughs> these new guys that come in here and they, you know, they, they wrap their trucks and go buy $30,000 worth of equipment and then they just take all your... So the guy reinvested in his business and took all your work? Wow, that's not a very secure company. It's not everybody else's fault. If somebody new is coming into your area, which they always do, people are always leaving, they're always coming. In the past 15 years, there has not been an increase of window cleaners out there. I know. I know it seems like it. But the new guy who's coming in has watched a bunch of videos. They're in the technological era. They see how a website does what they do. They wrap their trucks. You're noticing it more because they're more flamboyant. They're out there. They're being more out there. But there's not more of them. Well, this guy's taking all my... It's the economy who's... Okay, so did you pivot? What did you do? What did you change? How did you advertise? What did you put out there? Well... You know, it's the economy. I, I've advertised less. I had to scale back. So you're advertising less, and now you're shocked that you're not getting more work. Well, yeah, you know, I, I can't uh, afford to spend. Third. You're not spending anything on advertising. Understand the concepts of business come back to you. Now, 
Let's go into the COVID thing. There were businesses that lost a lot and closed. There were also a a ton of businesses that lost a lot and survived. And it was the structure and the owner and the There were companies that lost everything, closed down for months, but they somehow made it through. How did they make it through? It wasn't the economy. You're in the same economy. You're in the same situation. It was the business owner. In your case, if you're having something in your industry, in your world, in your business, in your market, in your numbers, in your gross, in your net that you don't like, you can change that. You can change that. You will change that. Or you go, well... That was a good run, but nah, guess I'm closing down. I got guys who tell me about how their business, they've been in business for X amount, X amount, and every single year they go down in business and down in business and down in business, and they can't find people. And it's because of people like me, and, you know, they're going to have to close just because they're, you know, they can't believe how how the uh, things have changed and back in their... There's other companies out there that have been there that long that continue to grow every single year. If you want to blame people like me or you want to blame the economy or you want to blame the the new guy or you want to blame, fine. But understand deep down inside that you're the reason you get to succeed. There are so many of you doing phenomenal numbers. The growth is ridiculous. There's guys out there that are doing 100, 150% every single year. Boom, growth, double, 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 double. And in the same market, there's guys going down and down and down and down and down. And it is up to you to decide which one you want to have. Do you want to go up? Do you want to be stronger? Do you want to have a better business? Or do you want to go down? It's up to you. That part's the hard truth. That took me the longest to actually kind of understand it. And hopefully it makes sense to you. Anyway, there you go. I'm so glad that you watched, and uh, I would be even more glad if I could be a rep. I put in uh, orders. I help people answer questions, bidding, pricing, everything. My number is 862-312-2026. Yes, I'm a commissioned salesman. That is how I make my cheddar. So if you want to be awesome and uh, do next to nothing while giving me money, huh? then uh, let me be your rep. Um, it really, it costs you nothing extra. Uh, you get a guy in your corner and I get to live and eat and everything else. So thank you for everybody who does that truly. Um, if you want to, again, 862-312-2026 is my cell phone. Save it. Jersey is my name. Like the state. Um, and... Get a subscription to the magazine. Also, another way you can contribute back uh, if you ever want to and get something out of it. And it's super rad. And I really like magazines and paper magazines. And man, it's so good. Uh, AWCMAG.com. We'll get it. Until next week, go out there. Hopefully, learn something from the lessons that you've learned. Tell me what those lessons are, if you agree or not. But more importantly, go out there and be epic.